Yeah, um, I haven't done one on the when the grid goes down for a while, but I will do this one, and I've got another one that will be coming. Um, we had a drought here, um, and for some reason, a lot of people assume that a grid of any kind is all interconnected, uh, like you know the natural gas grid may be sort of like that. The power grid is not completely like that. It, it's in a way. It's it's sort of you know there are areas of it um, that are sort of all linked in together, but uh, there are other areas that um, you know are running on on different power stations from the rest of them. Um, but people assume that the water grid is all connected as one as not. The water grid is a whole series of small systems uh, that are all sort of separate actually. Um, and that's the way it's set up over here. And um, yeah, basically, a lot of people assume that you know, oh, everything's connected. Uh, whatever restrictions I'm going to cop, someone else is going to cop. And you know, in the capital city, they never actually had to stop watering their plants. They just were brought down to watering uh, every second day. Uh, they never actually stopped them watering plants entirely yet. In the city that's closer to me, they did. They just said no more water and plants. Full stop. Uh, of course, washing your car, that one disappeared. That was, you know, banned pretty much straight away. Um, but it was sort of allowed to go on for a short while uh, on proviso that you watered it, uh, that you cleaned your car over the lawn to water the lawn in the process. Um, and you know, while there were still people watering garden plants every second day in the city, other areas ran completely out. There were about two towns at least that just the tap just ran dry. There wasn't any water left, none. Uh, they had to get it all, you know, bought in. Uh, a lot of these people had um, tank water as a, uh, a secondary thing and they, they had to get it uh, bought in with a, um, with a, a semi. Um, Many other areas, quite a few smaller towns, um, not heaps of them, but there were enough that, um, you know, there were a few that sort of copped this. Uh, they were down to 50 litres per person per day. Um, now, to put that into perspective, I think it's about 12 gallons per person per day, uh, US gallons. There's 3.8 litres in a US gallon. Uh, so you can do the maths and work that out, but there's, you know, there's very little amount of, of uh, water at all. I, I realistically don't think you could wash clothes or anything with that amount of water. Um, you'd be battling to even have a shower on a daily basis with that amount of water. Um, you know, it, that was that was pathetically low amount of water. Um, but that's what they had to live on. That's what the restrictions were. And then when the floods come and filled them all up, they stopped them using water altogether uh, for drinking um, and they sort of basically held them off from using water for two weeks after the water came down. You know why? There's all mud in the pipes and mud in the system and they're trying to flush it all out. They're madly waiting um, for it to settle to the bottom uh, before they turned all the taps on because they were going to draw all this muddy water through the system and they're worried about too much mud getting in the system and they're trying to keep it from getting in the system. but the flood just whooshed so much water and there was all this, um, you know, the reservoirs were full of brown water, not clear water. Um, and there's bits of blooming branches and stuff that got washed into it and everything. <laughs> bits of trees and all the... Uh, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, so the grid essentially um, had troubles. Um, one of the, well, I think it's a woman who brings water here to me. They try to tell her, oh, why don't you use grey water? I mean, they're talking about people's shower water here. Why don't you start cutting with that? And these stupid yuppies, especially the ones that are in the newspaper here, uh, assume that all the water that these people dealt with was only to water sporting grounds. And that same woman that they interviewed, I'm pretty certain, is the same one that comes here and fills my water tank up. And what, they expect me to fill my drinking water up with someone else's old shower water? This is how full of it some of those yuppies are with understanding 
basic things that go on. You know, there's so many yuppies that I've come across who just cannot understand a single thing outside of their way of life and their way of living. Um, and I've sort of, uh, you know, you, you cop all the things of why do you need a big car? Well, uh, hang on, I've got to carry scrap metal. I've got to cart around uh, water for, you know, my trees and all that. I've got to cart that in. Um, I've, you know, got to occasionally deal with hay bales. Um, and wool bales and rocks and cement bags and if I don't have a big car, none of this stuff moves. Um, and you know, and there's, there's all this lies about how big cars take a lot of fuel and my car um, at 11 years of age took less fuel than what some of these small toy four-wheel drive things, toy SUV things, um, short wheelbase ones that they have in the city that are brand new were taking um, and yet somehow it's a, a fuel guzzler but anyway that's a whole nother story um, but you know there was sort of um, a lot of arguments and stuff over water usage and stuff like that and one bloke said to me that oh I don't believe it it's just a heap of crap and I'm like what do you mean you don't believe that we're running out of water. He literally wouldn't believe it that we're running low on water and running out of it. So he was continuing uh, to water his lawn, um, even though he was told he couldn't uh, by, you know, the authorities and that. Uh, he used to water it anyway, usually when the sun had gone down. Um, and, oh, I don't believe all that crap. But it, it, it just, he simply went into denial of the fact that we were running low on water. Um, and he just wouldn't believe that it, it was like that. And that's all just crap. And I think, what do you mean it's just crap? You can literally go to these places yourself. You can go into these dams and they've got like picnic areas near and whatnot. And you can see the water levels are there. You can see it with your own eyes. But, you know, this is the thing. Sometimes when there's troubles in the grid and, and troubles with a lot of stuff and, and that, um, the old um, psychological phenomena of being in denial kicks in. Before then, there's you know realization and possibly panic or or you know grief after it. You know, there's sort of um, you know there's a whole bunch of people who sort of um, you know can go a bit funny when the grid goes down. Um, and yeah, there's believe me, there was plenty of arguments, but it all ended up with a great big desalination plant being built. Uh, and then there and you know here, jeez, you got short memories. I will tell you what. At the time, they said they got on TV, you know, the governor or, or what we call the premier got on TV and said, I want to make a desalination system that can handle keeping water up to the main capital city, screw all the other smaller cities and the smaller towns, but keep water up to the main capital city non-stop, completely regardless if, if we don't have any rain for 10 years of the run. You know, he literally said it doesn't, it, you know, we want to make it so it doesn't matter what the weather does, we'll still have water. And then they built this whopping big thing at a massive cost with all these people blooming, uh, apparently trying to string the job out as long as they can. Now, hold your breath when I tell you this. This is not a joke. This is standard labour. Standard labourers in mines will get, you know, two and a half, three thousand dollars $3,000 a week. This is in the mining industry. These sods were getting four grand a week for doing a bit of building work, and they reckon they were stringing it out as long as they possibly could, and you know just tried to go slow, don't hurry because we've got to make these jobs last as long as we can, and they're on four thousand dollars a week as average construction workers. I could not believe it when I found that one out, and most people couldn't either because we we're paying for all this, and we're still going to pay for it for many years to come. Um, but we got this monstrous thing built. There were that many bloody problems and stuff with it, and it was leaking. And ah, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's built. And um, they said it. You know, they said now it's a white elephant. And now they're in the paper with their short memories, uh, quoting the French um, bloke who managed the. Uh, it was a, a French. Uh, uh, firm who was given the contract to organise it all, I think. Uh, but anyway, the head bloke of it all was a French bloke. Um, and he said, well, you know, I just build what the client wants me to build and I don't argue the toss about it. But he says, when I look at your case, the amount of rainfall you get compared to 
the size of the desalination unit you've built is overkill. And here they are with the words on the front page of the paper. You know, uh, French builder says plant monstrously too big, you know, or something like that, uh, saying that uh, according to the, the French, uh, you know, manager of the whole show, of the whole building project, um, that he thinks it's far too big um, because of the amount of rainfall we get. Well, this is the whole point. They were trying to build one that could supply the entire city regardless of if we got no rain at all. And the short memory has him there saying, oh, this isn't appropriate. This is way too big for the amount of rainfall you get. And this on its own, um, solely on its own, could supply your entire capital city. Well, we knew that, and that's why we built it like that to begin with. God, blimey, it was built so that if there's no rain for 10 years, it would keep the capital city going. Uh, and here they are with their short memories whinging about it all. Uh, but now we've got to foot the bill for this uh, thing that um, they rushed in and built. Um, and there were people that were that stupid that some people were saying, we've got to build dams, we've got to build dams. Um, and, oh, these people would sit there literally and say, there's no point in building dams because it's not raining. And the response had come back, well, duh, when it finally does start raining again, at least we'll have somewhere to catch the water and then we'll have the water in this dam and be able to use it. Uh, but there are people that dumb that would say, oh, it's not raining, so there's no point building a dam. And then when it is raining, those same stupid people will probably sit there saying, oh, huh, we should have dams built so we could catch all this stuff. Yeah, well, you know, it takes more than five minutes to put a dam up, doesn't it? You know, it takes a couple of years. Um, but anyway, uh, that's the whole story of um, the drought um, in, or at least in my state, um, that occurred back in 09 or thereabouts.